Hi everyone, thank you for spending time with me today and welcome to my Marketing Your Small Business webinar. My name is Christopher Garcia and I'm the Business Development Specialist at the SBDC at UNM Valencia Campus Workforce Training Center. Got it all in one breath. I created this webinar uh, with the basics that every small business owner should know about marketing and to introduce you to a marketing plan if you wanna go forward with one. I'll email everybody who attends today a PDF of the slides, so don't worry about links. I have them on the uh, uh, on the slideshow. Here is a graphic of our center locations throughout New Mexico, and the mission of the SBDC is to build skilled entrepreneurs and strong businesses by offering no-cost confidential business consulting and lower no-cost business training events like this one. And you'll notice a blurb about the SBA at the bottom of the screen. We are funded in part by the Small Business Administration and the state of New Mexico. So this is your tax dollars at work. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the SBDC in the next few slides. Before I go into the training offerings, everybody who could see and hear me, could you raise your hand for me? Perfect, I'm working with a savvy group today. Okay, I'm gonna lower all hands. If at any time during the presentation, something's going funky, you can't see the slides that I'm talking about or the material that I'm talking about, raise your hand for me and then I'll know something's going on. And if you would put your questions for me into the Q&A feature, and just so we know the Q&A feature is working, would you put a hi, how are you into the Q&A for me? And then we'll reserve the chat for anything else that's going on. So let's see. Hi, Melissa. Hello, Robert. Hi, Nicholas, I'm doing well. I hope you are too. Michael, hi. Perfect, I think you're a savvy group. If there's anything that uh, isn't a question about the slides, put it in the chat and I'll be happy to answer that as well. And I got another hi from Donessa and a hi from another Michael. So we're doing good today. Perfect. So the slide we're on now, it talks a little bit about um, our services. Again, our major services are confidential business consulting and lower no cost business trainings. There are no limits to how much no-cost counseling you can receive. And we have centers throughout New Mexico, so there'll be one close to you. And if you look at the graphic in the upper right-hand corner, it shows what we strive to do. Renew, grow, launch, and start up small businesses. We welcome you to our statewide trainings like this one. So you know where to register, you've already registered. If you need to register for a training that I'm coordinating, you're welcome to email me or call me and I'll be happy to put you in that training if you're not able to register. This slide shows what we expect from our clients. My fellow business advisors and center directors want you to succeed. So you'll be assigned homework or further research. So please do the work necessary to succeed. We can't make decisions for you or offer tax or legal advice. We can only connect you to the information you need to make educated decisions. And part of making educated decisions is working with licensed professionals like attorneys or accountants. And if you have a question about finding an attorney or an accountant, put that in the Q&A and I could answer that more in depth when we get to Q&A. Here are the objectives for today's uh, webinar. We wanna, we'll, uh, t I'll tell you a little bit. I told you about how the SBDC can assist you. We're gonna go over marketing plan basics, talk about marketing research tools and there's a ton available to you. We will explore social media marketing using Facebook because that's the program I'm most familiar with. And I'll give you an overview of Google My Business. And if you're interested in claiming your Google My Business profile, we are gonna have a webinar tomorrow on claiming your Google My Business profile. And we are still searching for a, a volunteer who wants to claim their Google profile live. If you're interested in that, sign up for that webinar and send me an email. I'd be happy to talk to you more about it. So let's get into target market. If you've taken my e-commerce, uh, an alternative selling webinar, you've, you might've heard this lecture already, but it's great to hear it again. So why is a marketing plan important? When um, It's because on, sales are all about identifying your target market or markets 
analyzing your product or service offerings, creating a profitable pricing strategy, and successfully distributing your products and services, and effectively promoting your products and services. So first step, identify your target market or markets, and I'll show you great uh, tools for that after the slide. Uh, and then the four P's of marketing, that's what we call them, product, price, place, and promotion. Every activity you do in your business should align with your target market or markets because these are the customers most likely to purchase your product, aka those customers you don't mind spending money on. If you think everybody in the United States or everybody in New Mexico is your target market, think again. You'll most likely go broke promoting your product to everybody in the United States. So create the perfect customer in your mind then describe him, her, or it, and I'll show you some great research tools offered to you at no cost by the SBDC. And let me give you this example. Say you make and sell women's clothing and you have a store in Belém, New Mexico, but you have to maybe take your business online or you're just starting your business. Your ideal customer would be a woman with a household income of 100,000 or more who purchases clothing and shops online. If the clothing you sold were Western wear, you might think of women with interest in bull riding, farming, country music. And if your products were modeled after a famous country music singer, you might want to target those who say, listen to the music of Taylor Swift, because I'm a Swifty, let me tell you. Now that we've identified our ideal customer, we can tailor the products or services to their needs or wants. The research tools I'll talk about later suggest the most popular products in women's clothing are accessories, tops, bottoms, dresses, and outerwear. And you already know what your custom items are and your high profit items are. It's important to keep your inventory lean because uh, you don't wanna to have to do all the work associated with keeping an inventory and checking an inventory. Price is a very important factor because you might have lower overhead if you're starting a home-based business or an online business, uh, but there are a lot of fees associated with that. You also have to make time for returns and exchanges, customer questions, and make some time for marketing, promotion, uh, bookkeeping, and accounting. There are two common types of uh, pr set, uh, pricing methods. Cost plus, which is finding the costs associated with creating a product or service, and then marketing it up, setting up maybe a 25, 30% markup. And then there's market pricing, which means researching, uh, the prices other people are asking for your similar product or service and setting your price that way. If you have a unique product, you can set the price by uh, figuring the cost and adding a markup, of course. Distribution is important because this is the scope of work you're going to provide or the scope of people you are going to serve. If you were a service provider, of course, you could, pr you could provide services for people across New Mexico or across the United States. But when we're uh, talking about a marketing plan, where are you gonna spend the money to get customers? Where are you gonna spend your time to get customers? So think of this as the scope of where you wanna sell um, your products or services. After figuring out our product price and place, you can think about promotion. And there are more ways to promote your business than ever before. Some common methods are blogging, uh, personal selling, social media marketing, uh, word of mouth and reviews and uh, other standard media. When picking a promotion method, keep your target market and budget in mind, especially your budget. And some interesting ways to promote your product new, uh, these are new ways, include paying or giving free merchandise to bloggers or bloggers to promote your product. That's um, uh, called influencer marketing. And I like to give the example of unboxing videos. I love when people order mystery boxes and unbox them on Facebook or YouTube or, or wherever they uh, advertise their stuff. So, but, and after making the, the decisions, after identifying your target market, making your decisions about product, price, place, and promotion, you wanna create uh, benchmarks and goals. So think of promotional goals like reaching 100,000 viewers on a Facebook ad, track the results and calculate your return on investment. So if you spend $100 on a Facebook campaign and reach 75,000 viewers, your cost per viewer is less than a penny. And I think that's a pretty good campaign. And to learn more about marketing or get a deeper dive into um, uh, creating a marketing plan, I included a link for the SBA's Learning Center. They have a great 
online uh, learning module called Marketing 101. Let me see if I could get to it without messing everything up for you guys. So this is the SBA's website. Let me make sure you're seeing what I'm sharing. And Nicholas asks, what is, what's an appropriate budget amount to do good, a good amount of marketing? I think for a new business, you could probably get away with $100 if you're doing social media marketing. And I'll give you an example of that a little bit later. So here's the SBA's website and under their learning platform. My link didn't want to open for my site, so I'll show you the manual way to get there. We have two types of learning centers. There's the regular learning center, and then there's a Cent for Women. So all my women on the call, if you're interested in taking that program, it's an awesome program. So let's go into our regular learning center. And then under Market, there's some information about market research. I think my lecture today is going to be a little bit uh, more thorough than this one, uh, and I'll give you some great resources. But the Marketing 101 is the best uh, webinar I've ever taken about marketing, and this is what I based my marketing webinar off of. And at the bottom of the screen, there's Marketing 101 worksheets. And if you do anything, if you take anything away from this webinar today, it's to look at the Marketing 101 checklist and the Marketing 101, a guide to winning customers. And this Marketing 101, a guide to winning customers, let's see if I can make it a bit larger for you, is everything we talked about on that slide. It's identifying your target market or markets, the four P's of marketing, and then creating benchmarks to track your results. And they go further into uh, the three um, benchmarks that you should track. Return on investment, customer lifetime value, and customer acquisition cost. And then they have a great fill in the blank uh, module for you there to figure that out. So now that I introduced you to a marketing plan, let me open it up. Are there any questions about a marketing plan? Anything um, that you might need some clarification about? I know I went over the marketing plan on one slide and pretty quickly. No, and if you do, you could put them in the q and I'm happy to answer those when we're done. And now let's get into the cool, uh, cool stuff, the, the sexy part of marketing. So I wanted to give you a little, uh, I wanted to go into a little more in depth about the marketing measures. So let me tell you about those. So after researching your market, creating a marketing strategy and implementing your plan, you must track your results and know how uh, know, to know what works. This is the part of marketing plan where people often struggle because tracking the results of a marketing campaign can be difficult and require planning. What do you want from your, you have to ask, what do you want from your marketing efforts? You have to ask yourself. Do you want website visits? Do you want online purchases? Do you want customer acquisition, loyalty, engagement, or brand awareness? Well, when tracking something like brand awareness, think about tracking your social media campaign using a hashtag. You could set up news alerts on a news website. So anytime your business name is mentioned, you could see what why it was mentioned. You could track website visits, clicks, or in-store visits. If your goal is website visits, try creating a special link to your website using something like Bitly. This enables you to create and track a specific link when using it, say on a brochure, uh, on a social media post or other sources. Also make sure uh, the website or advertising software you're using has analytics and you could track those. Say you want a, uh, more purchases on your website or in-store. These days, point of sale systems collect excellent data. If you want more specific data on a customer, try a customer loyalty program. Uh, I like to use the example of those from Starbucks, Sonic, and Subway. And I bet you uh, Starbucks knows exactly what I'm gonna order when I walk in the store. And finally, if you're after customer engagement, measuring things like reviews, 
monitoring websites like Google Trends might help and monitoring your social media accounts is an awesome way to see if customers are engaging with your product or service. Common measures include customer lifetime value, customer acquisition cost, and return on investment. And the link at the bottom of the screen takes you to direct, directly to SBA's Marketing 101, a guide to winning customers. That's that guide we just talked about. And they go into this a little bit more in depth. And for website visits, the uh, analytics providers that I recommend here, Google Analytics, there's Pixel. If you're doing email marketing, you could use a program like Constant Contact or MailChimp. And that's basically creating a small website. And it has great analytics and it could track the links people click. It could um, track registrations. It could track people visiting a website, how long they stayed on a website, where they visited on that website. But these, the everybody thinks it's pretty easy to track goals or track uh, outcomes from a marketing effort. It does take you asking a question, what is your goal? And uh, finding the analytics that could, or finding the data and tracking the data that could answer those questions for you. So next is market research. Many people get intimidated about market, about market research because they don't know the awesome tools available to them. Some of the best indicators about a potential market can be found in our, our data tools. Census Business Builder is a no-cost database that allows you to research demographic information about potential customers, find stats about similar businesses, and provide information about consumer expenditures. IBIS World is a database that provides industry analysis from economists and business analysts about a certain industry. Data Excel is like a phone book on steroids, and I'm going to demonstrate all of these for you. The Council of Governments is responsible for keeping traffic counts in an area. And if you're in the Albuquerque metro area, it's the Middle Rio Grande Council of Governments, and they have an interactive traffic counts map. In other parts of New Mexico, the information is compiled in reports, but it's very useful. Google Trends is a website that lets you see what people are searching for in a particular area. Similarly, Keywords by WordStream allows you to enter a word or website and it gives you a list of words that people associate with the search. So now we're getting into search engine optimization. Now that we know where to find the data, how do we use it? So I, I uh, came up with some questions here. And if you have more questions about the data tools, you put them in the Q&A and I can answer those. But the first question I, I have is how much, how much are people spending on lunch in Albuquerque versus Hobbs? if I wanted to start a food truck or a restaurant in those areas. So let's explore that by using Census Business Builder. Census Business, and that's a link on the slide, and I could send that li the direct link out to everybody right now. Everyone. And there's two types. There's the Small Business Edition and the Regional Analyst Edition. If I was in a, a city like Albuquerque, I would want to use the Regional Analyst Edition because I could really dive deep. If I'm in most of New Mexico, rural Los Lunas, Belen, the Small Business Edition is just enough. So that, now it's asking you, what kind of business are you in? Because it does give you stats about businesses like yours, but there have to be at least 100 uh, statistics for them to be released. Most uh, rural areas won't have that information, but the other information I'm going to show you right now is awesome for market research. It's sorted by NAICS code or NIACS code. If you don't know your NAICS or NIACS code, reach out to your local SBDC. Today, I'm going to use one of the quick buttons. So I'm going to go to food service and restaurants because there are there's a lot of information about restaurants. And you could search by state, metro area, county, city or town, or zip code. In this case, if I if you want to chat over a place or a zip code, I'll be happy to look that one up. So the first person to chat something over, if they want me to look in a certain area, I'm happy to do so.
Santa Fe. I don't think I've ever done Santa Fe, so that would be good. It's a little clunky of a database, so you enter in what you want, and then it brings down a drop down menu. You have to select from the drop down menu. So we don't want the metro area, we don't want the county, we want the city or town of Santa Fe. And you could explore these stats on a map, or you could create a report. I prefer to create a report because it's easier for me to read and understand. And thank you, Michael, for the suggestion. So let me show you what's in a report. You have your potential customers and it gives you de a demographic characteristics about the area. So the total population, are there enough people in this area to support my business? Percent male and female, not too very helpful. There's usually about a 50% split. Um, some racial breakdown. If you were marketing something specifically to African-Americans, this probably would not be the place to spend your money in Santa Fe. Gives you some socioeconomic characteristics. So the median household income is 57,274 in Santa Fe. That's a high household income. And my rule of thumb is if you wanna do retail or food service in a place to go into a place that has a median household income at or above the national average. So we're just slightly below. So this is a great place for retail or food service. Gives you some educational characteristics, health coverage characteristics, language characteristics, veteran population. Then for my, uh, my um, contractors and, and service providers on the phone, if you do anything based on a house, if you're an electrician, and this is census driven, so this is the, the uh, most recent census activity, and they usually are a year behind. In this case, they're two years behind on this. But if you uh, do any sort of services in the home, your main indicators are gonna be median, occupy, uh, median owner occupied housing unit value, so the median house in Santa Fe is about 290,800. I'm sure it's gone way up since COVID. And then you're gonna to wanna to see the median year the structure was built. And if you're a service provider like that, you might wanna go into a place where there are a lot of expensive homes that are old. So maybe Los Alamos, Belen is a good one, Santa Fe, they're pretty old there. And then if you wanted to start an apartment complex or do rentals, you might wanna see how much it costs to rent in that area compared to buy. So it's a it's pretty comparable. So I would say it's a great place to have a rental. As we go down, we could see um, the number of employer establishments in that er this area. So in Santa Fe, there are 158 uh, food service businesses. The average employment per employer, there's about 23 people who work at a restaurant per average. Average payroll per employee. Population per employee, 525. This is very important. Will that support my business? And that certainly would in Santa Fe. And the total employment of employees, there's 3,653 people employed by restaurants in Santa Fe. And the total annual payroll, about well, in the thousands. So what's that, 800,000, 8 million? Gives you some more stats like average revenue per employer average revenue per employee. So you pay an employee 20, what, 22,000, 23,000. They make you 54,635. 54, I think that's a great return. Average revenue per uh, do payroll dollar. That's good. You're making about, what, 250% on the, on the dollar. And total revenue of employers, that's what, so that's what a, a, a 1 million, almost a $2 million industry. And see, we have no data on workforce. There's just not enough uh, data available in these areas. And my favorite part of the, oh, there's some building characteristics if you're interested in building. And this is my favorite part of this report for market research. And these are annual 
consumer expenditures per household. So per household per year, and this is 2021. So we saw the average household incomes about 53,000. The average expenditures in a home are about 71,000. We're living above our means in Santa Fe. And if you wanted to see how much people in a certain area were spending on different categories, you could see the average household expenditure per year. So consumer expenditure on uh, women's apparel, the average household spends $672.26 per year on women's apparel. They have some funny ones in here like um, uh, dating services. That was one I, I always find hilarious. Let's see, PC repair. They a well, dollar ten on average. The average household spends a dollar ten on dating services. I, that's that's gone up um, constantly over the years. That I always find that the funniest one. But if you're interested to see if this would be a good place, good market for your business, this is a great database for you to use. And the question I asked here is, how much are people spending on lunch away from the home in Albuquerque versus Hobbs? So let's answer that question uh, using this database. So we want to go to. Albuquerque, the city of Albuquerque. And let's go to the bottom of the page. Lunch away from the home or dining out on lunch. In Albuquerque, they spend, the average household per year spends a, about $1,000 on lunch away from the home. Is that a good place for me to put a, a restaurant that's gonna serve sandwiches for lunch? Maybe. I'm also near Hobbs. Maybe I'm from Hobbs. What, how, what, what's Hobbs like? Gosh, there's more people in Hobbs than I remember, 38,000. What's the average household income? About the same as Santa Fe. Now we're finding an emerging market here that might be great for a food service restaurant. So they almost spend as much as in uh, Hobbs as they do in Albuquerque. And then I could, if it gives me the information, I could see how many restaurants there are in Hobbs or how much, uh, there are 32 restaurants in Hobbs. The population per employer is 1,170. So Hobbs is a, as a market similar to Albuquerque and the population is larger per employer. So that might be, an, uh, that's a way for me to find a market. Oh, maybe Hobbs would be better uh, to open up a restaurant than Albuquerque. They have similar stats. Of course, there are more people in Albuquerque, but you're, the, the number of restaurants is much smaller. So you have more people that you serve per restaurant. So that's how you would use this database to do market research. Next, I wanna show you the Council of Governments website. And I'm um, using the middle row brand, but you, you uh, let's see by a show of hands, how many of you are in the Albuquerque metro area? Now, you don't all raise your hands at once now. Nobody on my call today is in the Albuquerque metro area. Ay, ay, ay. So you guys are gonna see this information in reports. Let me show you what it's like if you're in the Albuquerque metro area. So this is how you would use this database for market research. Say you wanted to put up a location 
and you want to see where is the best place for me to put up this location. I'm a restaurant, I'm a laundromat, I'm a gas station, and I depend on, on uh, people passing by uh, my business. So there's a place for rent on Paseo del Norte, just just past the cemetery here, and we could go by the stretch of road. We just click on the stretch of road here. And it's really small, but it tells you the, this is Paseo del Norte, east of Wyoming, west of Barstow. And it tells you what the average weekday and the average daily traffic counts are. And this was 2020. So the average daily traffic count on this stretch of Paseo is 24,828. So if my, my business depended on people passing that business, seeing my sign like the gas station, uh, this, would, this would be a very nice place for me to, to place my business. There's also a business space available on Wyoming. See if I could get there. Okay. So this is Wyoming, north of San Francisco, south of Paseo del Norte. In 2020, they had uh, nine, uh, the average daily traffic count in 2020 was 19,669. Similar, but their, the location on Paseo would probably be a better location if my, my um, business depended on being seen by traffic. If I was going to put a billboard up or signage up for a business, um, maybe my uh, there's a billboard available here on on uh, this stretch of San Pedro. The average daily traffic count for that is 9,912. There's uh, also a billboard available on Jefferson, which is just across the freeway. The average daily traffic count is 10,435. So in this case, It'd probably be a better investment of my money to uh, to get that billboard on Jefferson rather than San Pedro. And I got a question in the Q and Will this be recorded for viewing later? It will, uh, but I'm not sure when I will be able to put it up. But it will be available for later viewing eventually. Let's see, what else can we glean from this? Say I wanted to have a pop-up shop in a certain area. Maybe I want to do it on Indian School versus Lomas. I'd probably be better off doing it on Lomas. So that's how you could use the MRG, uh, the Middle Rio Grande Council of Governments traffic counts or, or their traffic counts reports in other regions for market research. Let's see. Let me look at my next question. So my next question is what are the major markets in IBIS world for a restaurant, what are my target markets for a restaurant using this IBIS world? And IBIS world and Data Excel, you have access to through your SBDC counselor. So you do have to make an appointment with them to access these databases. The ones that are highlighted in um, either pink or blue, you they're free to use. So you have access to those. So the Census Business Builder, you have access to now. Uh, traffic counts, you have access to now. Google Trends and Google Keywords, which I'll talk about later, but let's go into IBIS world. Let me show you how that database could be used for market research. I access it through the UNM library. And I was going to look up restaurants, but if anybody else has a, uh, a suggestion on an industry to look up, you could put it in the chat 
And if that's broad enough, I will certainly use it. Take a sip of my drink while I wait for a suggestion. If not, I'll use restaurants. Michael, I like entertainment services, but the market's very the market's too broad for that for this example. So let me try single location full service restaurants. And let me show you how this could be used for market research, especially if you're starting a new business or expanding a current business. And I always use this example before lunch to make everybody hungry. So let's see what drives money into this business. Consumer spending, consumer confidence index, which is how people view the future of the economy healthy eating index, households earning more than $100,000 and an urban population. And who are our first tier buyers? Customers in the United States. So that's, so right here I'm gleaning from this, my target market should probably be residents and households earning more than 100,000 or more in an urban area. So maybe I'm gonna pick Santa Fe, maybe I'm gonna pick Albuquerque, Maybe I'm going to pick um, Las Cruces. And let's see what the drivers are doing. So consumer confidence in the index, it looks like people are, are viewing the economy a little bit more brightly. And this was between 2016 and 2021. Consumer spending is up. Urban population is up. Households earning more than 100,000 are up. And healthy eating index is at zero. It hasn't gone up or down. So the growth of revenue in this industry is predicted to be between 3.9% um, between 2021 and 2026. So this is an industry that's growing, at least profits growing in it. Profit was down between 16 and 2021, but it looks like it's on an upward trend. Profit margin was down, but it looks like it's on an upward trend. The number of businesses looks like it's gonna grow 2.3% between 2021 and 2026. So if I wanted to start one of these businesses, probably a good indicator, it's a great time to start. Employment in that industry is going up as well as wages. And what are the products, what are the most popular products in the, uh, or services in this industry across the United States? If I'm starting a new business, what kind of restaurant would I want to start? Probably the most popular if I'm experienced an Asian restaurant or a U.S. restaurant. So we like our Asian food and we like our hamburgers here in the United States. If I wanted to do a steakhouse, that's a very small portion. That might be a risky venture unless I was in a really high income area. So the market is really suggesting Asian and US restaurants. Gives you some a lot of narrative about the, the industry. Tells you how it's doing with revenue. So as, as confidence in the economy drops, this industry is going to suffer. So we want a good economic outlook to have a uh, profitable restaurant. And the this and this uh, industry is actually in the decline. So more uh, businesses like this will close and open. And then the the best part of this report especially for my marketing webinar is the major markets so these are the these are your target markets households earning more than a hundred thousand and households earning between 50 and 99.999 but really you want to go into a place where there are a lot of households earning more than a hundred thousand dollars so what are my major markets that we answered that question in this ibis world report Now let me show you a database called Reference USA or Data Excel. They changed the name to Data Excel, but everybody who knows it, we love it by its original name, Reference USA. So how would we use this for market research? 
So we found out from Ibis World that our target market for single location full service restaurants is households earning 100,000 or more. So let's see how many households, the question I'm gonna ask myself is how many households are, uh, are earning $100,000 or more in Belen versus if somebody wants to give me another area in New Mexico, I'll, I'll uh, look up that area. So let's do estimated household income of 100,000 or more. in Belen. And Michael, you're on top of it. You suggested Santa Fe, so we'll compare Santa Fe to Belen. So this shows me that there are 642 people in Belen that meet our income requirements. Is that a good place for a single location full service restaurant? I don't know, but we have the information we need now. Let's compare that to Santa Fe. There are 13,628 um, residents or households with that income level. Might be a better place to start a business. Another question I wanna ask myself in this database is how many businesses are there like mine in an area? We need to know that for marketing, right? So we could go to Belen, New Mexico. We want restaurants. In Belen. There are 37 restaurants in Belen. Let's do Santa Fe. There are 425 in Santa Fe. So is Santa Fe a saturated market? Is that, or and is Belen an emerging market? I don't know, but we could find the information that way and it definitely help you make better marketing decisions because of it. Another cool thing, let's go back to Belen. Another question I had is, and the business plan, it's gonna ask you, what is the total market value of my industry in a certain area? So to answer that in Belen, how much are people in Belen spending on restaurants? And here, is, here are all our restaurants in Belen. If you wanted to be more concise and do single location full service, we could do Alejandro's, we could do Big Mike's, we could do Burritos al Estante. Oh, that's more fast food. We could do Carlos, like Carlos Cantinos on a business. We could do Casa de Pizza, Circle T, Las, Las Dos Gringas, La Esquina de Sabor, I think that's gone. Oh, no, they have the best tamales there. Let's see, Phoenix Cafe, I believe that's out of business. Pete's, that's been around forever. Penny's, Montano's been around forever. Taqueria, Taqueria Sinaloa, the best taquitos I've ever had. Uh, Wing Street, I haven't seen that one. Sunrise Bluffs, Sandra's, Virgilio's, and Rita's. So if we wanted to just go with the full, the full service single location, so those are all the full service single location restaurants in Belen. We could download the data in detail. Because this is a question straight from, um, straight from the, the business plan. So let's download records. They popped up on my other screen. Let me bring them to screen two. And they give us an estimate of the income the business makes. So here's location sales volume. Take it with a grain of salt, but it's a great estimate. Let's do an auto sum. So the restaurant industry in Belen is a $3,795,000 uh, industry. So is there room for you in this industry? Uh, another question is what part, how much do you plan to, to take from that market. So how much can you make as a single location full service restaurant in Berlin? And is that enough? So it looks at minimum 
there's six, 66,000, it looks like at a high point, 556,000. So where do you fall in there? Maybe we could do the average, the average is about 229. So potentially you could make $229,000 as a full service restaurant. And that's what percent of this market? It's less than 1%, I'm going to tell you now. About 6%. So you could, I think you, uh, somebody coming into Berlin could steal at least 6% of that market. And I got a... Uh, chat saying Wing Street is a Pizza Hut operational. Thank you, because I don't remember ever seeing a Wing Street in Berlin when I go through there. How else can you use this database for marketing? Let me show you. If you are a business that catered or served to other businesses, say our 2017 star client was Valencia Flour Mill. And what they do is they mill their own flour and create just add water mixes. And they sell those just add water mixes to restaurants, specifically New Mexican, Mexican restaurants. We could search for all the restaurants in the area. And maybe they want to cater to just New Mexico. I could pull them a list of restaurants in New Mexico. And we call this a lead list. We could download that in detail or summary, depending on what information you need. And there you have a list of potential customers for your business. And you could decide how you want to uh, promote your product to them. Do you want to visit them? Do you want to give them a call? Do you want to send them a postcard, a letter? Do you want to send them a free sample? Where are these places? Say you're wondering where are, if you're wondering where are a lot of these restaurants, we could go back. We could look at a map. And this is just a small selection, but it looks like most of them are in Bernalillo County. Sandoval County has a lot of them. So maybe I want to plan a trip to Sandoval County, visit some restaurant, uh, New Mexican type restaurants there, take them some samples. Maybe I want to uh, um, concentrate my marketing on Bernalillo County because that's where most of my restaurants are. This could help you with suppliers. So say you are a small grocery store and you wanna look for a list of suppliers to get your products from. I could pull a list of uh, food distributors. And let me show you the one that most people on the call will be very excited about. Maybe you wanna do a postcard mailing or mail a letter just like we get from a lot of realtors, uh, home improvement businesses uh, to a certain uh, demographic. So maybe if we're going to do a new restaurant, maybe we want to send out a, a, a postcard letting people know that there's going to be a new restaurant in a certain area. So maybe we're going to, we know what the zip code where our restaurant's going to be located. Let's do 87111. That's a higher end part of Albuquerque. We want to do estimated home income and we want to, since we're spending money and we want to go, we don't want to blow our budget. We want to go for our target market. And if we're a restaurant, it's going to be those in households earning a hundred thousand or more. And we have lifestyle characteristics. So we could look at these things like uh, people interested in collectibles, people who have um, interested in accessories, beauty and cosmetics. I've used these before. 
For our restaurant, we're not gonna use any of these, but these are available to you. We want one per household. There are 9,206 households in that zip code that uh, make 100,000 or more. We could view the results and we get names and addresses. And we could use the names and addresses to mail them a letter, a postcard. Um, what we can't do is we can't call them or email them. If you wanna call or email them, you have to purchase this list from Data Excel and they run uh, $1,000 for 5,000 contacts. If we wanted to see where this market is, maybe we wanna see on a map, where would be the best zip code in Albuquerque or in Santa, let's do Santa Fe. Where's the best zip code? And we do that with the summary. Where's the best zip code in Santa Fe to find our target market? And it looks like 87508. So that helps us with our, our scope, our, our distribution. Where should we distribute our product or service? That's gonna be definitely 87508. So th those are some of the ways you could use this database as a marketing tool or for market research. Let me see what else I have on my, on my slide. We found the dollar amount of a market. We found the potential number of customers in a market. Let's go on to um, Google Trends. And let, let's answer this question. What types of products are people looking for? So maybe I had an Etsy shop that sold crafts and personalized items. Let's see what people are searching for. Let's do dolls. And this is the United States. So these are the kinds of dolls that people are searching for. So I guess, let's see. Or people search for dolls. This will tell us where people are searching for dolls the most. So it looks like in Kentucky. So maybe there's a market for people selling dolls online in Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, Alabama. There's some related searches like a Shakira dancing doll. I was wondering why Shakira came up in that one. Encanto dolls, Ivy dolls, um, Eileen Disney dolls. So if you, if these are what are really, these are what people are really searching for. Rainbow high dolls, dance is a topic that people are really searching for. So that could help you create a product offering that uh, you could use, that you could really distribute. Let's see. And then another question I, I had here is who could be a potential influencer? So if you wanted to do influencer marketing, who could be a potential influencer for my market? So let's see, let's explore these Google Trends. So here's a fun one, Taylor Swift versus Kim Kardashian. So if I was gonna pay somebody to promote my product or service, probably I would go with Kim Kardashian versus Taylor Swift, even though Taylor Swift is my favorite. So that's a little bit of how you could use Google Trends to create, uh, to find products, uh, that people are searching for. You could also go to the categories. You could do beauty and fitness. Let's see here. So what places are searching for the beauty and fitness most? I think I'm still on Taylor Swift versus Kim, Kim Kardashian. Let's see here. 
it's kind of a clunky database to use. But it gets the job done, let me tell you. Explore. And these are the main topics people are looking for right now. Ticket emission, Russia, Ukraine, 2022 topic. You could go into certain places. Here's categories, arts and entertainment, Spider-Man No Way Home, Spider-Man Homecoming, Johnny Depp, concert tour. Um, do I create a product associated with these? Do I offer a service associated with these? Uh, these are hot topics right now. So let's look at our next database. And that's Google, uh, WordStream. And this is where you find keywords. And I get a lot of questions about how do I increase my search? How do I show up early in a search? It's to find keywords associated with your product or service. And you could do that in two ways. You could enter another keyword. So maybe I sell shoes. They ask you where industries, you could pick an industry. If not, you could continue in the United States. And these are the, the searches associated with shoes. These are the keywords associated with shoes, famous footwear, Steve Madden, boots, Air Force One, Yeezy, Yeezy slides, Nike shoes. And maybe I need to sell one of these products if I want to be successful in my business. Sneakers. Maybe I need to incorporate some of these keywords into my website or my marketing material uh, to better find people for my business. Ugg slippers off. Oh, that's my search right there, Ugg slippers. But, and then it gives you a dollar amount. What are people paying to, to uh, get their that search term? So it looks like Famous Footwear is investing a lot of money into keywords to be found. Sandals. Look, people are paying a lot of money to, to get their business found if they sell sandals there. And then let's see. These are the questions I asked related to this database. What things do people closely associate with my product? If I sold shoes, Nike, Dunk, sandals, Ugg slippers. Are there products that I don't offer that are more popular? There could be, like Yeezys. You offer those for sale. Are they popular? And what products attract a lot of customers? Looks like sandals. Probably because we're in summertime right now. Let's see what searches are in the millions. Nike blazers, shoe stores, Hey Dude, Air Force One boots. That's a big one. So that's how that uh, could help you find uh, products or services that need to be offered that are very popular that are being searched for a lot. So let's go. That's That does it with the databases. Let's go on to our next slide here. So let me dive into social media briefing uh, briefly. Our friends at investopedia.com define social media marketing as the use of social media platforms to interact with customers, to build brands, increase sales, and drive website traffic. This might be a new concept for some, but imagine taking our traditional human interactions online. There are best practices for social media marketing and MailChimp has a great article about them. They list identifying your target market, defining your goals, allocating your resources wisely, develop a unique strategy for each platform, post relevant content regularly, interact with followers, always maintain professionalism, reflect your brand identity, prioritize quality over quantity, and measure your results. And a lot of those sound very close to the business plan that we talked about earlier. And I put the best practices for MailChimp there. And if you want to learn more about uh, using the paid marketing tools or, or marketing on Facebook, I included a link for Facebook Blueprint. They call it Meta Blueprint now. 
but let's go into the SBDC's Facebook page, business page, so I could show you a little bit about how I would do social media marketing. So here's what a business page looks like on Facebook. This happens to be the business page for Los Lunas Small Business Development Centers. Let me bring up my... my notes here so I can see what I wanted to talk to you about. First, I wanted to tell you, update your information regularly, post regularly, uh, and then I'll show you how to use groups and paid services. So let's see, what is all this marketing on social media about? It's keeping your, your business information current. It's using this platform to engage with customers. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to engage with customers and funnel customers from our social media profile to our website or to our storefront. So you got to post things directly related to your clientele. This it's easier for me because I'm a, I'm a public entity. I don't have to create unique content as much as somebody in business would. Um, and I'm able to post things from our chambers of commerce and whatnot. So I have it a little bit easier. And then I post different articles related to that small businesses would find interesting. I post things from um, our partners like SCORE, um, MEP, here's from OSHA. And here's about uh, Block Advisor kicks off micro grant program for LGBTQ businesses. This had a lot of views. So we call these organic, we call this organic reach. So when we post something and a lot of people find it by themselves without much, without us having to pay for it, we call that uh, organic reach. So this had great organic reach. It had great uh, five engagements. So this might be a post I want to boost. I might want to pay to have more people see it. If this were an advertisement for some shoes I'm selling online, if this were an advertisement for my restaurant, um, I might want to boost this post. And it has one share. So in my notes, I, I recommended using groups. So you could join groups and you could share things related to your business. They usually don't like you to promote or they have certain days you could promote. But if you wanted to share to a group, you could do so. I don't, I'm not, I don't have any groups on my uh, SBDC profile, but if I did, I would want to share this to a group like the um, LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce in Albuquerque, New Mexico, the Belen Chamber of Commerce. Um, and that's free and organic reach. If I wanted to pay to have more people see this, I could boost this post. And I could create an audience or I could use a smart audience. My um, preference is to create an audience because I pulled an IBIS world report. Uh, if I'm a restaurant, I know who my audience is. It's both men or women, probably 30 to 65, 30 to 64 in a certain location in Los Unas who have an interest in restaurants, Maybe at my restaurant's healthy eating, may, or maybe it's pizza. Who have an interest in pizza. Who have an income, uh, top maybe 10 or 5% of zip codes. We'll name this pizza. And I can't update right now. But say we're going to do people who like your page, or maybe we're going to do wealthy homeowners. These are people who have homes uh, and incomes in the top 10% of zip codes. If I invested $14, which is $2 a day over seven days, uh, Facebook suggests I could reach between 114 to 335 people. And I, of those people who I reach, 8 to 28 will click on that button that says uh, call now visit my website, shop now, whatever you wanted to do. And you could create really nice ads with great images. You could do a slideshow of images. 
uh, and you could draw people to your storefront, your website, you could have people call you if you're a service provider. And I think it's a very low cost, inexpensive way to do marketing. Again, there's two thing, two ways of marketing on these social media platforms, organic reach, which is you posting things and people finding it on their own. And then there's the paid uh, boosting or, or promotion of your product or service. And I think just having a business page is great. Um, you could collect reviews from Facebook and they will also show up on your Google My Business profile. And I'll talk to you about that next. Let me uh, look at the Q&A real fast, see if there's anything I could answer. Let's see. Is it better to create your own website or hire somebody to do it? Well, Nicholas asks, Nicholas, that would depend on your knowledge. If you're pretty savvy and you could use a web, uh, WYSIWYG, which stands for what you see is what you get website creator, like Wix, WordPress, Weebly. If you have the knowledge and skills, I would do it yourself. If you don't, definitely hire somebody to do it for you. If you were gonna sell things online, you might want to get the knowledge you need to create your own website and um, operate your own uh, marketplace because it could be expensive if you're having to hire somebody to post a new product every time you have a new product. If you're having to hire somebody to download uh, who bought a product for me, that could get very expensive. Vanessa says she has an Etsy shop for makers. She makes dolls, crafts, personalized items. Perfect. Thank you for joining us. Let's see. Michael says, how do I set an appointment for a consultant on getting IBIS World or Data Excel data and general business help? My best suggestion to you is to go to our nmsbdc.org website. Go to locations, find the location nearest you. and contact the business advisor or center director directly. I prefer to be contacted by phone, but all our uh, contact information is listed on the location pages. And then uh, Nicholas asks, for posting, is there someone from the SBDC that can teach us how to post links and do designs for these posts? I could teach you, I have that expertise. Brian DeBuff in Santa Fe has that expertise. Uh, Brianna Montano at Luna Community College has that expertise. I would reach out to your local center and they could always bring in somebody in the network with that expertise to uh, co-counsel with you. Let's see what's in the chat. Gaming headsets, I'm guessing you wanted me to look gaming uh, headsets up on the IBIS world, that is too specific, Nicholas. We, I don't think I'd find any information on that one. Okay. Okay. We're doing good. So we talked about social media marketing. Now, let me get back to our slideshow. And again, if you want to get a certification, in marketing on Facebook, they actually offer those for free on Facebook Blueprint. So take advantage of those and they could give you a more in-depth guide to, I just wanted to give you an overview of like the basic to organic reach and paying for it. And so you could see what an ad looked like and what kind of reach you could get with an ad. And I think it's a pretty low cost and effective way for you to advertise, especially if you have a product or service in a local area. So let's go to our next slide. And the last part of today's webinar I wanna show you is Google My Business. I had uh, that question about websites before. So if you claim your Google My Business profile, you actually have the ability to create a very simple website for free. So the way to get to Google My Business is to go to google.com slash business. <clears throat>
let me show it to you here. And you could claim your profile on other search engines too, like Bing, um, Yahoo. They have uh, offers like this, but Google's is probably the, the biggest offer and they probably let you do the most things. Some other programs you might want to consider claiming your profile on are Yelp, um, Angie, places like that. So what is a Google My Business profile? It is what shows up when somebody Googles your business. So let's do SBDC at UNM Valencia. And you could see our profile right here on the right-hand side of the page. This is what you're claiming. Your little piece of real estate on, on Google. So let me go in, let me sign in. And on the back end, I could show you the one for Los Unas Small Business Development Center. This is what our homepage looks like. They actually give you an ad credit. So if you wanted to purchase a keyword, and we talked a little bit about that, say you wanna purchase the keyword sandals and you could be found first uh, whenever, whenever uh, people type in sandals to Google. It's, it gives you some analytics. So how many views you, you uh, have, searches and uh, some activity. You have to actually claim this profile. And when you do, they have to send you a postcard. Most likely they'll send you a postcard and you have to have a physical address that receives mail in order to receive this postcard. And this is what the profile looks like for people who have a physical location. If you don't have a physical location, you're claiming your real estate on the map. So let me show you what that looks like. You're claiming your profile. Oh, let me do this better. Your claim, if you don't have a physical location, you're claiming your, your uh, profile on the map. And that's what it looks like here. It's pretty much the, the full profile that you have if you had a storefront. It's just more abbreviated. But you get the free website whether or not you want the, the full, if you have the abbreviated or the full profile. You could create posts, which are just like posts on Facebook or social media. Uh, if you have a new product uh, you're offering, if you have an offer, you could put in a coupon code. Uh, you could put what's new with the business. You, if you're having an event, you could put an event up. I think that's great. You could update your info. And this is the main reason Google um, offers you to claim your profile because they deal in information. That's their service. And they wanna have the most up-to-date information and who better to have the most up-to-date information than that business owner. You could view on search, you could view on maps and you could share your business profile. And then you could update. We, uh, you could either have a physical location or a service area. If you don't have a physical location, don't put in an address. You could put in the times you're open. You could put in special hours. Like if I was gonna put it, we will we'll be closed on Labor Day. I usually put when we're closed for the um, winter break. You could put in phone numbers. If you have more than one, I believe you could put in three. You could create an at or a, a smaller um, profile name so people could contact you and you could get messages directly on Google. I opt not to do that, but if you were a service provider like a hairstylist, it might be something good for you. Uh, you could put in a website and we have our own website, so I could put that direct website in here. If I had products, I could list our products with pictures and I could put links to where to purchase those products. And they get found when you uh, when somebody does a Google shopping search. Um, I could put in a blurb about us, an opening date, and I could add photos. The insights it gives me are great. And I, if there's anything you take away from this uh, webinar today, other than the first thing I told you, it's to claim your Google My Business profile. And remember, we're having that webinar tomorrow where Brian DeBuff from Santa Fe is gonna go in more in depth on how to create a Google My Business profile. 
So this tells us our searches. So from branded content, I guess somebody, we might have paid to have SBDC appear in a, a YouTube ad or something. People found us there. People directly searched for the SBDC at uh, UN and Valencia campus, 106 did that. And uh, 326 just discovered us by typing in maybe business services in Los Unas. If we were gonna put out an advertising campaign, like maybe we sent out a postcard mailing or maybe we put up a, a, a billboard, we wanna see what day did we do that? Did we do that on this day? What's that date? June 27th, we, uh, people searched for us 23 times and 29 times on the map. What did we do on that day that generated those searches? And this tells us did customers call you? Did they request directions? If I was a storefront, I would want to see that they uh, requested directions. If I was a, a service provider, I might want to measure calls and set a, a, a benchmark for how many calls I want to get. This tells me what time of the week the phone calls were, were busy. It looks like a Thursday. So don't call me on a Thursday. Or <laughs> that's when everybody else calls me on a Thursday. Photo quality. You could track your reviews and you could reply to them. And it is a best practice to reply for to your reviews when you get one. And the more reviews you get, the more relevant Google thinks you are in that search. And you'll appear uh, closer and closer to the top. You could accept messages if you want people to message you on the Google platform. You could put in photos of your business and they ask you for two. They ask you for a cover image and a logo. And if uh, you want that free website, they're gonna use these in that free website. Here's that products portion where you could put in products and pictures of your products and where to get them. And here is that free simple website I told you about. I'm not gonna publish this since we already have one. Um, but we have the option to use this one. We can't make a lot of changes to it. We only have a few themes we could pick from. We could only edit a few uh, parts of this website and we could, we could put as many photos as we want actually. We could change our button from call now to uh, get directions. Our reviews appear on it. You could tell us a little bit about the business. We could, our photos appear. It has a map and it gives us our, the full contact information for our business. And if you're a home-based service provider, if you're uh, somebody who creates things to sell on Etsy, but could potentially sell them, uh, deliver to customers in the Albuquerque metro area, this is a great free website for you. They give you the address whatever your business name is, dot business, dot site. You could always make some adjustments to it, but not very few. Or you could purchase a URL. That's what they call the web address, a URL from Google for $12. And uh, I don't particularly want that one, but they're suggesting Los Lunas to Small Business Development Center, sbdc.com. I have permission from one of my other clients to show her website. She purchased the URL pcgallegosart.com. She's a local artist. Her name's Patty Gallegos. Uh, we created this cover image together. And we had this website up in about less than an hour. And it's really all that particular business owner needed. <clears throat> and it gives you a great web presence very quickly. And I see somebody is asking for the link to tomorrow's webinar about Google My Business. So let me put that in the chat to everybody. And now, um, if you have any questions about Google My Business, 
about anything we covered in the slides. Now's the time to ask them. But let me do my recap. So basically the recap, now you know what sources you have available to you to do market research and market research and planning is important. Who is your target market it's, or markets? It's vital that you know before you spend any money on marketing efforts. Uh, are you willing and able to create and maintain the physical and digital systems for an online store or just advertising in general? Can you uh, create your own website? You need to hire somebody to do that. Can you claim your Google My Business profile? And do you have the staff that you need to effectively market your product or service? Let me go back to slide one with my contact information. And let me open up the chat and the Q&A. And we don't have that large of a group today. So if you want to ask a question, you're more than welcome to raise your hand and I will answer your question. So let's see, Michael asks, says he's looking for low cost accounting help. That's a hard one, low cost accounting help. I could pull a list of accountants for you or your business advisor could from Reference USA. But the main resource for low cost accounting help I like to give is the IRS has a small business and self-employed tax center. And you could probably answer most of your questions that you might have about taxes from that um, tax center. So I'm gonna type that in, I'm gonna send you that direct address. And I'd say, give that a look. They also have, if you look at the left-hand side, online learning, and then they have a webinar called Small Business Virtual Tax Workshop. I'm gonna chat that out to everybody now. And Michael says, looking for filing corporate taxes, that um, Small Business Resource Center is great, but it's gonna, there, there's costs associated with them and it's gonna be hard to find somebody uh, at very low cost. Michael also asks, is Meta Business the only platform, like does Instagram or Snapchat offer a paid, pro, uh, offer a reach for paid program. So Instagram does too, and that's also on the, the Facebook blueprint. It's meta blueprint now, but the address is still Facebook. Meta for business, I guess is what they're calling it. And I could send that direct link out now. And that would cover Facebook and Instagram. And then if you wanted to do Maybe you're a business to business consultant. LinkedIn has a has their own. Let me put that in the chat. I'm sure Twitter does too. TikTok has one. Twitter has one. And take advantage of those free learning resources because before you know, before you invest the money to pay somebody to do this for you, maybe you need to know just the basics of what they're actually going to do for you. Because I see people pay a lot of money to have professionals uh, promote their business on social media, but they don't really know what they're getting for their money and they don't know if it's effective. So I urge you to uh, think about those things. 
I don't see any more questions. I'm going to stay, I'll stay on for a few more minutes. If you want to raise your hand and ask a question, you're welcome to. I'll allow you to speak. I'm going to turn off the recording.